KSJE and the Farmington Public Library present Quinto's Hana and Tales. Howdy! My name is Mary Lee Smith and I am the Deputy Director at the Farmington Public Library. I hope you enjoy the books I brought to share with you today. They're all about cowboys. Have you ever swallowed a bug? Well, that's exactly what happens to the cowpoke in my first story. It's written by Helen Ketteman. The name of the book is There Once Was a Cowpoke Who Swallowed an Ant. Let's find out what happens. There once was a cowpoke who swallowed an ant, a fiery thing with a Texas-sized sting. The cowpoke panted and his voice got higher. yippee ti yay My stomach's on fire! So he swallowed a spider, leggy and hairy. That was big as a bat and horribly scary. He swallowed the spider to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. But spider's legs wiggled and waggled, and the cowpoke's stomach jiggled and jaggled. So he swallowed a roadrunner, hungry and lean, to dash right in and clean up the scene. He swallowed roadrunner to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. But roadrunner ran so lightning quick that cowpoke started to get seasick. So we swallowed a lizard, a horned, spiky critter that was scratchy to swallow and terribly bitter. He swallowed the lizard to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. But lizard's skin was scritchety scritchy, and the cowpoke's stomach got terribly itchy. So we swallowed a dillo, the nine-banded type, that was hard as a rock and smelled really ripe. He swallowed the dillo to scare the lizard, to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. But Dillo's claws were sharp as a pointy old rake. So the cowpoke rustled a rattle-tailed snake. Then he swallowed that snake to catch the Dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. But Snake made his rattles shiver and shake, and the cowpoke's whole body quivered and quaked. So he swallowed a boar, nasty and mean, with the sharpest tusks he'd ever seen. He swallowed the boar to poke the snake, to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. But Boar's tusks jabbed the cowpoke instead, and the cowpoke shouted, I wish I was dead. So he swallowed a longhorn with horns like a lance. I reckon this critter might be my last chance. He swallowed the longhorn to trample the boar, to poke the snake, to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. When Longhorn showed up, Boar set off like a flash. Longhorn couldn't catch him to turn him to mash. The cowpoke got mad and stomped on his hat. I'll just do it myself. I reckon that's that. Then he saddled his horse, took his rope off the shelf. If I want it done right, I'll do it myself. So he swallowed his rope. He swallowed his horse. And then he swallowed himself, of course. He swallowed himself to lasso the longhorn, to trample the boar, to poke the snake, to catch the dillo, to scare the lizard, to chase Roadrunner, to eat the spider, to bite the ant that was stinging his stomach and making him pant. He jumped on his horse and rode with great speed and lassoed that longhorn to start the stampede. And finally, out raced longhorn with the lasso a flappin'. Out followed boar, his hooves just a tappin'. Out slithered snake in a very fast crawl. Out came the dillo rolled in a ball. Out skittered lizard hot on his trail. Out followed roadrunner nipping his tail. Out raced spider jackrabbit fast. And then came the ant, rid of, at last. The cow hulk climbed off his horse. Phew, I'm all spent. My get up and go has got up and went. So he pulled his boots off his feet and his hat off his head. Then he shuffled inside and fell into bed. The end. And that book was There Once Was a Cowpoke Who Swallowed an Ant by Helen Ketteman. When you think about all he went through, the cowpoke in that story must have been pretty tough. But if you compared cowboys and pirates, who do you think would be tougher? 
The name of my next book is Pirates vs. Cowboys by Aaron Reynolds. Burnt Beard the Pirate was the scourge of the seven seas, the four oceans, and several lakes. His scurvy crew had ransacked so many ships and pillaged so many villages that all their treasure had them riding low and slow. It was time to go ashore and bury the booty. Their usual spots were filled to the gills, so those pirates went inland, all the way to Old Cheyenne. Black Bob McCraw was the terror of the Wild West. His gang of rip-roaring rustlers were nastier than weak old chili and twice as gassy. And when they weren't out causing mayhem on the open range, they made their roost in the town of Old Cheyenne. So, needless to say, it was a sad and sorry day when Burnt Beard the pirate and his crew swaggered in to Old Cheyenne. Black Bob McCraw noticed them right away, and that was the start of the Pirate Cowboy Showdown. Look at the duds on them scallywags, Black Bob said to his posse, which is a nasty thing to say about anyone, even if they are pirates. To Burnt Beard's credit, he acted real civil at first, which wasn't at all in his nature. Ahoy there, me arties! Be you knowing where we'd be finding a fair scrub and a swish? Black Bob rode up real close to Burnt Beard. What do you call us, you yellow-bellied varmints? was Black Bob's reply. Why don't you mangy horn swagglers beat a trail of dust right back out of old Cheyenne? Burnt Beard tried again. Arg ye bilge rats! Be pointing us to some grub and gog, or we'll be keel hauling the lot of ye. It didn't take them long to realize that none of them could understand one lick of what the others were saying. None of them cowboys spoke pirate, and none of them pirates spoke cowboy. And that's a recipe for trouble. The more they talked, the madder they got. Way anchor, ye swabs, or you'll be walking to plank and feeding the fish. Burnt Beard snarled. His crew grabbed for their cutlasses. You rootin' tootin' critters better head for the hills, or you're gonna get horse-whipped and hog-tied like there's no tomorrow, Black Bob scoffed. His posse reached for their six-shooters. Pistols pointed, swords flashed, lips sneered, nostrils flared. Things were just about to get ugly as pirates, cowboys, and simple misunderstandings can when Peg Leg High Noon rode into town. Peg Leg High Noon was the world's only pirate cowboy. Among the cowboys, he was right famous like for his riding and roping, and among the pirates, he was legendary for his sailing and swashbuckling. He wore a six shooter on one hip and a cutlass on the other, and he was the only creature alive who spoke both pirate and cowboy. Peg Leg High Noon spotted the white knuckles of them pirates, he spied the firmly planted boots of them cowboys, and he knew that trouble was afoot. And Peg Leg High Noon didn't like anybody causing trouble. Except Peg Leg High Noon, that is. Peg Leg High Noon rushed in, fixing to teach a lesson to pirate and cowboy alike. He was ready to root and toot. He was prepared to swash and buckle. His right hand reached for his pistol, and his left went for his sword. But just then, the west wind shifted, and he caught a foul whiff coming off them cowboys. He turned his head away and sniffed a nasty reek, wafting from those pirates, and forgetting the trouble that was afoot, thinking only of saving his own sense of smell, he grabbed his nose and turned to Black Bob McGraw. You and your posse smell worse than a polecat in an outhouse, he screeched in perfect cowboy. Then he rounded on Burnt Beard. You and your crew smell worse than three-day-old sunbaked shark bait, he bellowed in flutant pirate. P you, you guys stink, shouted Peg Leg High Noon, waving a hanky in front of his nose, and that was something they both could understand. So leaving Peg Leg High Noon standing there holding his nose, Black Bob McCraw let Burnt Beard the pirate to Old Cheyenne's one and only bathhouse and saloon. After a good soaping up, them squeaky clean cowboys poured them pirates foaming mugs of sarsaparilla 
After a good drying down, those well-swabbed pirates shared the kegs of grog they'd brought with them. And the old Cheyenne showdown between the pirates and the cowboys came to a peaceable and sweet-smelling end. The End. And that book was Pirates vs. Cowboys by Aaron Reynolds. Well, it sounds like the toughest thing about both pirates and cowboys was the way they smelled. I'm sure glad Peg Leg High Noon came along and made sure they got baths. The next book I have for you is about a cowboy who tries to be clean. After he cleans his house, he decides to give his dog a bath. And what do you think happens? Well, let's find out in Cowpoke Clyde and Dirty Dog by Lori Mortensen. Cowpoke Clyde propped up his feet. His house was clean, his chores complete. He'd even washed the kitchen floor and shooed the horseflies out the door. Then right behind his cooking pot, he spied one thing he'd plumb forgot. Old dog, his faithful snoring friend, all caked with mud from end to end. Clyde looked around his tidy shack. I'll scrub him down, then come on back and eat my soup and take a nap. Why, washing dog will be a snap. Clyde set his hat and grabbed a rope, filled some buckets, snatched the soap. But right before he sprung his plan, old dog woke up and off he ran. Spilling all the black bean soup, shooting through the chicken coop. Chicken's fur and feathers flew, stirring up a filthy brew. Gadzook, yelled Clyde. This ain't no joke. Come back here, boy, and get your soak. But dog ignored his mighty pleas. Instead, dog left a trail of fleas, pesky fleas that jumped and bit, fleas that caused a scratching fit. Clyde called to dog, don't run away, come get your bath and then we'll play. Dog paid no mind, so with a cry, Clyde swung his rope and let it fly straight at that ornery dirty dog, but missed his mark and roped a hog. A hog so big it snapped the rope, a hog that skittered in the soap. Soon chickens, fleas, and one fat hog were getting soaked instead of dog. Clyde curled his lips and set his brow. He'd get that dog someday somehow. Come on, boy, he called real sweet. Come here and get your favorite treat. I got a bone, some jerky too. Smell it, see, it's just for you. Dog sniffed the air across the flats, but instead of dog, Clyde got six cats. Six cats that hissed and fluffed their tails. Six cats that toppled soapy pails. Now chickens, fleas, six cats, a hog, were getting soaked instead of dog. Clyde came up with the perfect trick. He climbed aboard his wagon quick. This'll fool old dog, he cried. Get up now, boy. Let's take a ride. Dog circled round and twitched an ear. Clyde bowed his time till dog came near. Then, just like some pathetic fool, Clyde sneezed and startled his old mule. A mule that brayed and broke the hitch. A mule that kicked Clyde in a ditch. Now, chickens, cats, a mule, a hog were getting soaked instead of dog. Clyde cursed the mule, tucked in his shirt, wiped off feathers, fur, and dirt. Fine, he yelled. I don't care none. He kicked a pail. Old dog had won. Clyde shooed the chickens, cats, and hog and swore one day he'd get that dog. That's when it hit him like a joke. Forget it, dog. I'll take a soak. He cleared the mess and grabbed some grub. Heated water filled the tub. Then, soaking sweet beneath the moon, he warbled out a cowpoke tune. A tune that rattled like a snake. A tune that set the stars to shake. Then, not lightning quick, a howling sound split the night and shook the ground. Oh! And with an awful splash, Clyde knew he weren't alone. Now there was two. Two that soaked beneath the new moon. Two that liked to howl and croon. And ever since that fateful night, cowpoke Clyde and Dog don't fight. Because when they're filthy head to toe, Clyde and Dog know where to go. And that was Cowpoke Clyde and Dirty Dog by Lori Mortensen. 
So we've read some fun books about cowboys, but they were all a little far-fetched, don't you think? Here's one called Real Cowboys by Kate Heffler. Real cowboys are quiet in the morning, careful not to wake the people who live in the little houses in the hollow and up the mountains and at the edge of old fields in the distance. Their work is to think of others, of the calf stranded on the ridge and their dog coaxing it down, of how hundreds of moving cattle will feel about the sound of distant thunder. Real cowboys are gentle. They know all the songs that keep cattle calm, moving out of storms along dirt roads and narrow canyons. At night they sing lullabies over the calls of coyotes, songs that keep cows on a prairie deep in sleep. They head to places called Stillwater or Redtown, but wherever they are, real cowboys are good listeners. They're always listening to their trail boss or to other cowhands. Sometimes they listen for trucks and wolves and rushing water, and sometimes they just listen to the big wide world and its grass song. Real cowboys are safe. They pull their hats low because the sun can burn and wear chaps so the cacti and brush don't cut them. They're on cattle drives for hours or days or weeks, but they don't mind. Real cowboys are patient. Even on a fast horse, they have to move with the slow rhythm of a herd, and it can take a long time to get places. Real cowboys ask for help. They use hand and hat signals to let others know when they need them, and they ask their dogs for help, too. Real cowboys are good to their dogs. They have a special way of talking to them. Cowboys say, go by and look back, and their dogs listen, driving in a lost heifer. Real cowboys want peace. They don't want stampedes where all the cattle spook and thunder over the earth and scatter in dust storms. But sometimes it happens. Some of those cattle and dogs are never found, and cowboys think of them from time to time when everything else on the prairie is quiet. Real cowboys cry. Real cowboys take turns. They make camp when the sun is as low as sagebrush and eat in twos and threes at the chuck wagon. Later, they t take turns watching over the cattle while others stretch out under mesquite moons. Real cowboys are good to the earth. They pick up their campsites and keep cattle moving to save water and grasslands. Real cowboys can be strong and tough and homesick at the same time. They imagine the faces of people they love in the mountains they pass. Real cowboys are as many different colors as the earth. Real cowboys are girls, too. Real cowboys are artists. They create, they dream, they make up stories for their friends and horses and dogs. Stories about the world that are bigger than moving cattle to Stillwater or Redtown. They sit under skies so big the stars take shape on the ground and they wonder what's past the horizon. And one day when their work is done, real cowboys find out. The end. And that was Real Cowboys by Kate, Kate Heffler. Thank you for letting me share these books with you. I hope to see you soon at the Farmington Public Library where you can check out these books plus many more. The books that I read today, There Once Was a Cowpoke Who Swallowed an Ant by Helen Ketterman, Pirates vs. Cowboys by Aaron Reynolds, Cowpoke Clyde and Dirty Dog by Lori Mortensen, and Real Cowboys by Kate Heffler. This has been Quintos Hana and Tales, presented by the Farmington Public Library and KSJE 90.9 FM.